So welcome, 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 welcome. Um, a couple of quick notes on tech. Please make sure you're using the most recent version of Zoom, that is version 5.0.4. Uh, you have time. Um, if you need to check your version and update, um, feel free to disconnect, update, and join us back. We will still be here. We'll be here for the next two hours, but we'll make it, we'll make it exciting and fun for you, I promise. Um, we are, please mute yourself if you are not speaking. Um, we'll be using the chat for all questions and comments. Um, so please don't forget to do that. Um, and yeah, don't hesitate to ask any questions you have uh, during the course of the meeting. We've got two fabulous chat masters in Scott and Fred who you'll hear from. Um, so they'll be happy to answer questions that you have. Cool. Um, so why don't we jump right in? Okay, so welcome um, to the Visualizing Insights on Fertilizer for African Agriculture, VIFA. Apologies to the uh, Kiswahili speakers in the room, as you can tell. My Kiswahili is not great. Don't judge me too harshly. Um, I will do my best. Um, but the word VIFA, as we know, is Kiswahili for tools. Um, so we thought it would make a great acronym. Um, this is also a great reminder if I'm going too fast or anybody else of the speakers are, I believe, if you click on the three dots in your chat, you can use the different icons and one of them is to ask people to slow down. So please don't hesitate either with their reactions or in a note um, to tell us to slow down so that we can keep everybody together. Are we together? I'll take that as well. Yeah. Excellent. Okay, so let me walk you through the agenda really briefly. Um, we'll have introductions from the different partners of the VIFA program. Um, we'll have remarks from the Permanent Secretary, Professor Hamadi Boga. Um, then we'll dive right in um, to implementation in Kenya, um, finishing up with a walkthrough of the actual dashboard so that you can see how the pieces of the dashboard work in real time. Um, you'll have a chance to discuss uh, what you've seen in breakout group discussions, uh, which is a smaller group, which will hopefully allow for a bit more engagement. We will close out, and then for those of you who have a little bit more time, um, we'll do a quick demonstration of the COVID watch dashboard. So those of you who are curious about making decisions on fertilizer in these COVID times, um, the dashboard will really help with that. So I encourage you to stick around um, for that demonstration. Um, so without further ado, I believe I will introduce um, Alexander Fernando, who is the Regional Director for East and Southern Africa for the International Fertilizer Development Center. Um, good morning, uh, good afternoon, good evening, uh, wherever you're based. Uh, I hope everyone can hear me. Um, thanks very much, Beverly, uh, for that introduction. Um, what I would like to do on behalf of the VIFA Consortium uh, is really to welcome everyone to this launch. We're absolutely delighted to have uh, all of the partners here from public sector, from private sector, fertilizer stakeholders in Kenya and around the world. Uh, over the next few minutes, I'd like to briefly introduce the, v the VIFAR program and our consortium and also to set the scene looking at fertilizer data uh, before I introduce uh, the guest of honor um, for today's event. Um, as Beverly introduced, uh, VIFAR uh, is a Swahili word. It stands for Visualizing Insights on Fertilizer for African Ag Agriculture. Um, it's a four-year program that's designed to holistically address the supply, demand, and use of fertilizer data. Uh, it's funded by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. And the goal of the program is to develop dashboards to promote data-driven fertilizer policy and programming by effectively presenting information to public and private sector actors and then supporting them uh, to apply it in their decision-making. Uh, and we're absolutely delighted that today is the launch of the first of the dashboards. It's the Kenya Country Dashboard. Uh, and Charlene will introduce uh, the program and the dashboards uh, in a little bit more detail uh, further on in this webinar. So what I would like to do now um, is introduce uh, the partners. Uh, we have several uh, partners involved uh, in the VIFAR project. Uh, the lead partner is Development Gateway. Uh, it's an international nonprofit uh, that develops tools, processes, and customs analyses uh, to achieve results. Uh, we then have IFDC, uh, the International Fertilizer Development Center, uh, and one of our entities, uh, AfricaFertilizer.org, uh, that I will discuss in a little bit more detail uh, on the next slide. Uh, two other uh, very key technical partners uh, are AFAP, the African Fertilizer Agribusiness Partnership, 
uh, which is also a nonprofit organization uh, that implements development projects uh, and advises public and private sector actors uh, around solutions in the agricultural inputs uh, and agribusiness value chains. Uh, and lastly, we have uh, Wallace and Associates, uh, which is an international development consultancy uh, focused uh, on project design. If we can go to the next slide. Great. Um, so I would briefly like to introduce uh, in a little bit more detail IFDC uh, and our program AfricaFertilizer.org. Um, for over 45 years, uh, IFDC has been implementing programs around the world related to our core competency uh, of fertilizer technology, uh, but also more broadly than that, looking at agricultural productivity uh, and smallholder farmer access to inputs and outputs. Uh, currently, we implement around uh, 30 programs uh, in over 20 countries. Uh, most of these are in Africa, uh, but also some of these are in Asia. Uh, in Kenya, uh, where I am based, uh, we have had a physical presence since 2009. Uh, we implement value chain programs in a number of commodities. Uh, we also take, uh, undertake uh, fertilizer research uh, and uh, also implement uh, fertilizer market information programs. Uh, such as AfricaFertilizer.org uh, that I will discuss uh, in a little bit more detail. Um, in Kenya, we have a memorandum of understanding with the Ministry of Agriculture related to the fertilizer uh, enabling environment, uh, looking at a number of matters regarding uh, fertilizer data, uh, policy, uh, capacity building, uh, as well as uh, the supply chain. So we are the host uh, to AfricaFertilizer.org, uh, AFO for short, um, which works with key partners to consolidate and present reliable and relevant data uh, on fertilizer. Uh, and what does this mean? Uh, there's a number of uh, partners. Uh, on the left uh, of, of the, the current slide, we have the information and data providers. These come from the public sector, uh, for example, the, the National Fertilizer Technical Working Groups, where we work in various countries together with ministries of agriculture, uh, customs and the revenue authorities uh, to compile uh, fertilizer information. Uh, we also work very closely with the private sector uh, all along the supply chain producers, importers and retailers, uh, and also um, fertilizer experts and consultants. Uh, and then on the right, you'll see a number of uh, in-kind uh, and funding partners. These include IFA, the International Fertilizer uh, Association, uh, Development Gateway, uh, Argus uh, and also AFAP. Um, and AfricaFertilizer.org uh, works with these partners to combine information uh, and present two main types of information. Uh, the first is around fertilizer statistics, uh, and this covers various statistics. Uh, it looks at production, uh, trade, uh, consumption, uh, prices, and fertilizer use by crop, and also looks at market intelligence. And here we're talking about um, policies, regulations, subsidy programs, uh, as well as business uh, and product directories uh, and publications and use. This data is all free to access uh, and it's used by a number of users that you will see at the, the bottom of the slide. Of course, from the public sector, most closely the ministries of agriculture, uh, but also trade and the Bureau of Statistics. Uh, we have uh, very wide use among the private sector, uh, the fertilizer sector, both internationally and in the various countries in which we operate. Uh, also uh, from consulting service providers uh, and various development partners, including, for example, the agricultural research centers, uh, development banks, uh, and various donors. Uh, next slide, please. So I'd like to talk a little bit uh, about fertilizer data, which is the, the main topic of our discussion today. Uh, and here are, are two charts that I'll take you through. Uh, and the main message here is that Africa is really a key driver of global growth in fertilizer markets. So in the chart on the left, uh, you will have the anticipated um, expansion in, in fertilizer markets by volume. Uh, and you, you'll see that the largest growth is coming from Latin America, South Asia, and then Africa as number three. Interestingly, if you look at the chart on the right, you will see that this relative growth is the highest for Africa. Uh, and one of the reasons for that is that uh, basically until now, the African market has been a very small percent of the total global market. It's only 1% of the global market. So when you look at the, the total growth that's predicted uh, for Africa uh, as a percentage uh, of its relative growth, you'll see that it's almost 35% uh, 
projected uh, growth between 2018 uh, and 2023. What's really interesting to look at is what is the, the driver of this growth? Uh, next slide. Um, and we can see that the main driver is basically a, a very big and sustained increase in the application rate of fertilizers. So uh, in the chart on the left, uh, you'll see the application rate, which is uh, in blue columns uh, and expressed as kilograms of nutrients per hectare. Uh, and also shown here is uh, the cropland, uh, which is the area under production, which is shown by the line in the red. So previously, fertilizer use really was driven, uh, fertilizer use in Africa, sub-Saharan Africa, was driven by increase in cropland. Uh, but in recent years, particularly since about 2012, most of this has been driven by higher application rates. For example, if you look at the, the red bar from about 2012, uh, including up to the future projection of 2022, you'll see it's relatively flat. Uh, whereas the blue columns, which are showing fertilizer application rays, are showing very significant increases. In fact, these reach about 22 kilos uh, per hectare of nutrients from about 2022 onwards. And what is driving all of this? Uh, and the exciting news for, for Africa, for Sub-Saharan Africa, is that this growth is really driven um, by increased application, driven by increases in agricultural productivity. Uh, next slide, please. So the opportunity uh, that's presenting to, to all of us, uh, particularly governments and development partners and the private sector, is how to harness this data uh, to support fertilizer markets in order to participate uh, in the growth of these markets and to remain competitive. At the core of this uh, is looking at fertilizer data, which is very important in terms of planning, strategy and decisions, and also helping public and private sector actors uh, address bottlenecks in the supply chain. However, until now, one of the key issues really has been um, limited data, both in terms of uh, insufficient supply and also uh, in understanding the needs and priorities uh, of key decision makers. So um, with that introduction, uh, I would like to uh, set the scene for the launch uh, of the, um, the VIFA uh, Kenya Fertilizer Dashboard. Uh, and I would like to uh, introduce of honor uh, is not only a key partner uh, in this dashboard, but also um, a key decision maker and user of fertilizer data. Uh, Professor Hamadi Boga is the Principal Secretary uh, of the State Department of Crops Development at the Ministry of Agriculture, Livestock, Fisheries and Irrigation uh, in the Republic of Kenya. Uh, welcome, uh, P.S. Boga. Thanks so much, Alexander. Um, so we're going to give the PS a couple more minutes. He's running late from a previous meeting, so maybe we can jump into a little bit more background about um, implementation in Kenya, and then when the PS joins us, we can circle back. Does that sound good to everybody? Excellent. Are you still there? Are you still awake? Let me know in the chat if you have any questions. Um, thanks so much for that, Alexander. Um, without further ado, I'll turn over to Venetia, Grace, and Charlene, who will walk you through um, implementation in Kenya. Thanks, Bev. Um, so maybe I can just take a step back and walk you guys through a little bit of more about the VFA program and sort of the main pillars of the program because the VFA program in Kenya is part, part of a larger initiative and then we'll take a deeper dive into our Kenya implementation. Um, so as Alexander said, you know, the main goal of the VIFA program is to make use of the data um, and address the issues around it from both the supply and the, the demand side. And so we have been working um, with a broad group of stakeholders to do this in sort of three ways. Um, so, <clears throat> and they are, I'm, the next slide will show you that they are um, sort of T uh, talking about um, partnerships and understanding the realities on the ground through a scoping approach, um, sort of co-designing the dashboards and the Kenya stakeholders who are here can attest to sort of the 
the process that they have gone through to make this dashboard possible right now. And, and the last part being working together to close the data gaps. Um, so on the partnership side, um, we have, uh, we began the work in 2019, late 2018 by doing sort of these country level assessments in seven to eight countries. Um, and based on the availability of data, looking at sort of who, who are the stakeholders on, on the ground where sort of the demand for data is, we sort of picked three countries to implement in. So we um, began to work with Kenya, Nigeria, and, and Ghana. And, and that was mostly because of the partnerships that were possible on the ground, but also because availability of data. Um, and in this space, sort of our partnership with IFDC and AFO became really important because they became sort of the, the key source of data for us um, who sort of help us channel a lot of the data from partners on the ground. And then um, once we had that established in the partnership uh, part of the program, we, we moved into sort of the co-design dashboard part. So um, as we uh, began implementation in Kenya, um, and then we took those lessons and also started the co-design workshops in Nigeria and then in Ghana. And so the way those those worked is that we brought together public and private sector um, key stakeholders together into these co-design workshops to first like start to identify what data in that specific country context is most important. What are their use cases for this data and how, how do they want to uh, uh, apply them to inform um, sort of their priority key decisions. And then based on that, we co-design the dashboards more and not just sort of say like these are these are uh, the data we want to see but more like exactly how do you want to see each graphic what information should go in there etc and then of course you you build a dashboard and there is always you know ways to make it better to to go back and make sure that the the stakeholders needs and their use cases are address so in so we do sort of an iterative approach where we make make the dashboard go, go back to the stakeholders make some improvements based on their feedback etc and then the last part that um, we've been working on is sort of addressing the gaps in data um, addressing data gaps is uh, is not something that you know is a priority for the program it's it's not the main part of the program but we understand that you know if you want to use data and if something very very important is simply not there it makes it really hard to use it um and so in case of kenya we have not worked on the closing gaps in data yet and we can talk more ab about that later on um but you know in other countries for example nigeria we have already sort of we began to do the work because the gaps in data were quite huge um, in comparison to Kenya. And so um, we, can, um, we can start to see, as you look at the dashboard, what are some additional gaps in data that you see that you would like to talk about? Um, in case of Nigeria, we have been uh, applying machine learning methodology to, you know, to look at how can we better calculate Lander production um, so that if you go back to that first chart that we looked at by, um, sorry, the second chart by Alexander, where we say like the cropland has stayed relatively flat, like how accurate is that data and, and start to sort of get into the details of such things. Um, but um, more broadly, let's take a sort of a bigger picture view of how the Kenya work will fit into the larger timeline for the VIFA program. Um, so as you can see here on the timelines, um, we began the work um, in uh, early 2019 with the scoping work. Um, in, 20, in July in Kenya, we launched the dashboard uh, co-design workshops. Um, since then, we have been implementing in Nigeria and Ghana. We launched the Innovation Fund in Nigeria um, in February of this year. At, and we hope to do the same here in Kenya um, over the next few months. Um, and we're, as we get closer to the current timeline and the next 
year or so, we want to shift the focus from, you know, building the dashboard to using the data. Um, and then most importantly, AFO being our partner in this work, you know, by the time this program is done in November of 2022, um, the dashboards will fully live on Apple's website and they, they will be the owner of um, sort of the technical owner of sort of the, the technology piece and the partnerships with all of the stakeholders um, here in Kenya will continue through them. Um, so on that note, I'd like to actually have Apple team members explain a little bit more about um, their data. And so when you look at the dashboard, there is some context into how um, that data comes together. Grace. Thank you, Venetia. Next slide. So um, Alexander has already done a good introduction of who Apple is and who the founding partners are. So just a light summary, it's uh, hosted by IFTC and has had great support from APAP, uh, the Africa Fertilizer and Agribusiness Partnership, as well as the International Fertilizer Association, IFAP. So we've we received uh, support uh, on various, uh, to be able to develop various indicators um, and as well as work in various markets. So I'll just give a brief, brief background on what went behind the creation of AfricaFertilizer.org. So after the Abuja declaration in 2006, of course, uh, several countries had committed to increasing uh, fertilizer use. Uh, but uh, in doing that, there was a need to track whether the fertilizer uh, use was actually increasing. And one way to do that was with data. So while we had a good understanding that several countries have data sets, uh, they have them hold up uh, or in silos uh, in the different institutions, there was no one mechanism where you would understand how the fertilizer sector was performing in a specific country. And it also, uh, Getting to this is to understand that there was availability of information, uh, but there was very little use, uh, little access to the information as well as little use of the information in decision making. And this was characterized by a lot of clashing in markets, uh, in open markets, where you would find governments would use, uh, would make decisions that would more or less conflict with private sector. And uh, in such scenarios, you would understand that there was no uh, actual analysis of the data of the current market situation. And so Apple was created to, to have uh, an open source uh, website, as the name suggests, to, have, to allow for access to statistics uh, or key information on how the fertilizer markets are performing uh, in key markets in sub-Saharan Africa. Next slide. So this is just to give you a feel for AfricaFertilizer.org's uh, coverage. So while we work out of uh, four main countries or five countries in four countries in sub-Saharan Africa, we have uh, coverage or we leverage our partners in covering several markets in sub-Saharan Africa. And you will notice that the key markets we are covering are the ones with more or less the highest fertilizer use or highest fertilizer consumption in sub-Saharan Africa. But this is always also dictated by donor interest as well as uh, private sector interest on developing markets or market entry into already existing markets. Next slide. So this is just a brief analysis of the fertilizer products uh, or the statistics that we have. So we're covering uh, general areas such as production, and this is tr we're tracking this for the whole of Sub-Saharan Africa. Trade, uh, this is, we cover key markets as well as consumption, where there's an analysis of the apparent consumption and where we have very good data, we have an analysis of real consumption. Then we go a step and understand pricing. We know pricing is a key component in Sub-Saharan Africa. So we'd like to understand uh, international pricing component as well as the retail price component. And then we've gone a step further to do a cost, a cost structure. So the cost structure, uh, just to uh, briefly explain it is an analysis of what it costs to bring in product to a market, to move it across the port, and then to distribute it down to the farmer level. And this is, this are products that we create for consumption by both public and private sector, or a public sector perspective to inform policy, and a private sector perspective for players who are new to a market, or existing players who would like to change a strategy within a market. 
Uh, we've gone further to do markets. This is an assessment that we've done in collaboration with the Africa Fertilizer and Agribusiness Partnership. So where we're trying to understand uh, uh, from a private sector perspective, how are the markets structured? Uh, what, uh, what are the actual consumption volumes? What if states are consuming uh, fertilizers? And then market structures, how does product flow uh, through this market? Uh, we also have directories uh, where we have contacts of key players in the market, uh, plant registers to know what facilities are open in sub-Saharan Africa, those that have been closed down as well, and then product catalogs and just understanding uh, the flexibility of the different markets and what fertilizer products are available in the market. When it comes to policy, AfricaFertilizer.org has provided more of a supportive role uh, to different projects, international projects. Uh, where we supply them with market information or market statistics to then populate uh, policy documents. So this is just uh, an example of a data collection process and now we'll uh, specifically look at the fertilizer technical working groups. Uh, this has been a process that has really worked for us well since 2012 and we initially leveraged uh, uh, the setup uh, by the FAO uh, known as the Country Start Program, where they would bring together stakeholders from Ministries of Agriculture, Bureau of Statistics, uh, Customs, as well as private sector to sit down in one room and to be able to validate uh, official trade statistics. Uh, in doing that, uh, AFO went a step further to form a fertilizer technical working subgroup. And in forming this group, we were working directly with individuals who handle the statistics directly, uh, who are fully aware of what's happening in the market level, and when we would do the validation exercise on an annual basis, we would then uh, use the statistics to have the, have the Ministry of Agriculture uh, upload the statistics directly, have, uh, have policy uh, makers have access to existing statistics, as well as uh, private sector to know what the market size look, look like. So this has been a process that has worked very well because we have uh, all the key components of the key stakeholders taking a key role in validating this uh, statistics. And uh, as, as we continue, we're, it's allowing us to cover more markets. Uh, so right now we would say we're covering 14 markets, whereas we have fertilizer technical working groups, we're currently at eight countries, uh, but we have access or we have, uh, yes, we have access to additional trade statistics and through limitation on funding, then we are allowed to cover only so many markets uh, to carry out uh, data collection processes such as the FTWC. And with that, I'll hand it over back to Charlene to give us an update on where we stand with the VIPA program in Kenya. Okay, great. Uh, thank you, Grace. So my name is Shalin Migwe. I am um, the VIFAR project manager based um, in um, Nairobi. So what I'll do today is just uh, take you anywhere over to see the dashboard. But before we do that, I just want to give you more of a progress update and take you through the process of implementing the dashboard in Kenya. So um, as my colleague Venisha mentioned, we went through a code design uh, process. Um, in Kenya, we had three code design workshops in 2019. I see a number of the participants are on this call. So we had uh, private sector development partners, government, both national and county government in one room. And in those workshops, we're able to identify what are the key uh, data priorities they have that they may need in their work, and also go deeper into what visualizations would best be used um, to better communicate the data for their use. Then after that, in February 2020, where we had a draft dashboard, we went back to the, the stakeholders, the same stakeholders, showed them the dashboard, and we were able to get feedback that um, allowed us to make improvements on the dashboard between February uh, this year to now, where we will show you um, the final version of the dashboard. Moving forward, of course, we hope all of you, to, you, you everyone on this call will be able to use a dashboard, uh, which will be available to you after this call. We'll focus more on um, data use, we will um, work with you to understand your decision-making process, your processes, uh, support your data use, so that's more on a one-on-one -on -one basis, and address uh, critical data gaps you may identify as you use uh, the dashboard. We've been asked many times about um, how we ended up with the indicators that I will show you today. So our indicator prioritization is, was based on three uh, aspects. So one was the data demand, 
So as I said, in the core design workshops, we're able to engage all the stakeholders and identify common uh, indicators that would be of use to all the stakeholders. Secondly, we looked at the data supply, and this is where uh, partnering with AFO was very key for us, where we're able to uh, review the availability of the data, uh, the ease of access of the data, and of course, the quality of the data, and improvements of the quality uh, of the data over time. Then we looked at the appetite, uh, stakeholder appetite to, for the uptake of the data, which is the implementation opportunity, and trying to further understand the data system opportunities for implementation um, in the fertilizer sector. So what's in the dashboard? So we have uh, four key uh, indicator categories that we have that I'll show you later on, where we have uh, the price, where we have from, uh, it ranges from uh, cost buildup all the way to retail price. We have use, where we have um, apparent fertilizer consumption all the way to national average uh, consumption. We have availability that's informed by imports uh, data from carry, and we have a policy that focuses more on subsidy. So um, I think it's time now to dive deeper into the dashboard, which I shall give you a, a quick walkthrough of the dashboard. Um, and just a heads up, after this, you will be able to access um, the dashboard after this call. So to access the das dashboard, you will just go to africafertilizer.org slash vifa slash Kenya. And once you access that, uh, you'll be directed to our homepage. A quick navigation tip, um, on the header of the page, we have uh, an outline of each of the pages. So we have the four categories that I discussed. We have fertilizer price, use, availability, and policy. Uh, clicking on each of these uh, will allow you to go to the actual uh, uh, category to see the different, for example, price uh, charts. But back to the homepage. So once you get onto the dashboard, you will be able to see four key charts. These are charts that were highlighted as most useful by all stakeholders across the board. So for fertilizer price, we have the cost build up by year. Uh, you can filter by the year, you can filter by the product, and uh, more importantly, you can filter by location. And that way you'll be able to see all the cost categories from CIF all the way to um, road freight. And for each, you can see the subcategories for once you have on each, for each of, 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 of the category costs. Next, we have the fertilizer use uh, category, where we have the national average fertilizer consumption by nutrient ton that was identified by all stakeholders as, as the most valuable in this uh, category. Reason being, uh, all stakeholders were keen to see um, the country's progress towards the Abuja target of 50 uh, kg per hectare. Here you can filter by the years, you can look at all the nutrients, and uh, uniquely you can look at uh, the land area uh, based on either if you want to compare arable FAO or if you want to look, uh, look at it according to the crop plant uh, from uh, the FAO data set or if you want to look at um, cultivated land area from uh, uh, at the data set analyzed by africafertilizer.org. The fourth uh, on the homepage is a product availability uh, which is a monthly fertilizer imports. So this shows you monthly data and this allows you to look at uh, the totals of all imports but also look at the, uh, the actual volume in metric tons for each of the products uh, for that particular month. And that's easy to see just by a simple um, hover. Lastly, on the homepage, you can still see uh, the fertilizer policy, which is the annual subsidized fertilizer. Uh, this is by fiscal year. This was uh, a chart that was highly requested across um, all stakeholders. So from private sector to government, both national um, and, and county government. And of course, uh, development partners. And in this one, you can see um, the percentage of imports that goes to uh, subsidized imports. And you can see uh, the, uh, the actual products um, in this category and the total in metric tons. Or you can look at uh, the imports that go into the subsidized domestic blends. And you can look at that in metric tons and you can look at the actual volumes of uh, blends. So as I said, um, you'll be able to, to view uh, the categories of each of these, uh, of these uh, charts. But a quick navigation tip also is at the bottom of each chart, you can see the source of the data. So for example, for fertilizer policy, you can see the source is the Kenya Ministry of Agriculture, Livestock um, and Fisheries. So we can go to our first uh, category, which is our, our first page, which is fertilizer price. Just as a homepage, you have the cost build up. And here you can filter by the different products you'd like to see. Add the location and look at each category. 
the difference in this and the uh, advantage of this over the homepage is you can compare the different years um, and see the total cost buildup or even compare uh, particular categories that you're interested in. Uh, after understanding uh, cost buildup, you can also look at the fertilizer uh, price. Here we have an interactive chart where you can choose the product that you're interested in um, and you can choose the different locations you'd like to see in the chart. It gives you a simple visualization where you can see the variation of pricing across the different key towns in Kenya. So uh, it, the color ha has a connotation to it. So the darker the color, uh, the higher the price. So for example, in Nairobi, you can see ammonium sulfate is higher than maybe Mombasa, which is a lighter color, which is 1900 uh, Kenya shillings. You can further look at retail price if you're interested in comparing the different retail prices for different products and also comparing um, the change over the over different months. You can choose the months you're interested in, uh, choose the products that you'd like to see, and you, and you can choose the location. So here you can look at both uh, one location, or we also have an average of the retail price across the country. And as I said, you can quickly hover over each line uh, section and you can see the actual price for month uh, for each month. And you can also compare and look at how, for example, DAP compares to urea, for example. Um, we also have another retail uh, indicator, another, sorry, price indicator is monthly international price over time, where you, uh, you can select the different products you're interested in seeing. And you can be able to see uh, over time, uh, how, how does the retail price, uh, the monthly international price uh, change over time? And just as the, uh, the other retail price, you can compare it to other products um, in the line chart. So now that we've seen both uh, international price and retail price, we have a chart that compares those two and you can choose a product that you're interested in seeing um, and, you can, and you can compare the price uh, for each of those products. So for example, in green here, we have urea and in blue, we also have uh, uh, urea, the FOB for urea black seed. So that's a retail price, uh, pretty easy to go through. Uh, for fertilizer use, <clears throat> our first chart is the apparent fertilizer consumption, where just like it, it, all the other stacked bar charts uh, on the dashboard, you can see the totals and easily see uh, the difference in total apparent fertilizer uh, consumption over time. And you can further see uh, when you hover over each section, the actual uh, volume in, uh, in metric tons and select the products that you're interested um, in seeing. The next is the natural crop land and the production, another uh, map that we have. Just like the other maps, uh, you can see uh, just from a visual point of view, the difference um, in crop land and the production uh, based on the co color variation. So of course, the darker the color, the higher the natural crop land and the production. And you can select the crop, I'm, I'm looking at maize, but you can also select, for example, beans. And when you click on it, you can see the actual crop the county and um, the total area in, in, in hectares. You can also see the line chart uh, for each of the products. The next chart is the top fertilizer consuming crops. And this just highlights uh, the top fertilizer consuming crops in Kenya. For the purpose of, of this demonstration, I will show you all the crops, but you can either choose if you want to look at food crops only, you can look at that. So um, this, this gives you three distinct uh, data points. You can look at uh, volume of fertilizer. So you can look at all the crops uh, and the volume uh, of fertilizer used for each of the crops. And the bar chart shows you um, the actual value. And this allows you just to compare across the board. Uh, you can also look at area by area cultivated. And this also shows you um, the area cultivated for each crop um, in hectares and also uh, the application rate. Uh, I, uh, an interactive feature that you can uh, take advantage of is you can arrange uh, the, uh, the, the crops in order of um, highest to lowest um, in value. So for example, if I want to see uh, which is selected now, um, the, the crops in order of highest to, vol uh, highest to lowest in terms of volume of fertilizer, you can see that. But if I want to arrange them in order of cultivated area, you just click this arrow and you'll be able to, to change that. And also by application rate, which you can easily see how flowers goes to the top. It arranges it um, in, top, in terms of highest to, to lowest. For the pie chart, you can be able to see um, the different, um, the same data, but this is just visualized as a whole sum. So you can easily see the portion of, um, that's taken by each of the crops. So for example, you can see for maize, 
um, 53 percent of all volume of fertilizer goes to maize and when you hover you can see um, the different um, crops same thing for area cultivated when you hover you can see for the different crops uh, we also have fertilizer used by crop uh, another uh, uh, map that we have same rule it's easy to see uh, the different variations in FUBC um, across uh, across the counties and you can be able to see on hover um, the, the the county application rate and the national application rate just as uh, the previous one you can also see this as a continuous line chart so uh, our last graph uh, indicator is national average fertilizer consumption uh, if you noticed in the homepage, I showed you by nutrient ton, which focuses more on the nutrients. But in this case, we're looking at the product ton, and this data um, is, is selected from, uh, from apparent consumption, where we actually look at, at, at the product ton in metric tons um, um, in kg. And then uh, we still have the same feature where you can choose a land area you would like to use. So you have arable, cropland, and, and, cult and cultivated. And uh, the last chart, of course, is a nutrient turn, uh, national average fertilizer consumption by nutrient turn, which I showed you in the homepage. And in both charts, you can always compare to the Abuja target, which is 50 kg uh, per hectare. Next, I'll take us to the product availability page, where we have, um, as I said, this comes from the imports data set from Kenya Revenue Authority, where we have all the products that you can select. Um, and um, we can compare this according to consecutive months, meaning if I just want to see all the months uh, for 2018, I can choose them consecutively. But if I'm interested in consecutive periods and I want to compare a certain set of months across different years. So for example, here we're comparing January to April for 2016, 17 and 18. You can easily do that and compare them across the board. We have a similar chart, but in this uh, instance, we're comparing by product type. And here we have both balanced and conventional, where you can compare what, what, what's, what, what percentage goes to balance and what goes to conventional. And when you hover, you can actually look at the balanced fertilizers imported uh, and the conventional fertilizers imported. So the last chart in this category is the total fertilizer imports by year. And in this chart uh, simply shows you all the imports and the totals for um, each year. Uh, you can easily, it's a very easy chart to compare the totals uh, per month. So for example, if I'm interested to look at the difference uh, of, of imports, April last year, this year, and the other year, I can easily see April 2016, April 2017, and also April 2018, where I can compare across the board. Our last category, uh, which is uh, fertilizer policy. For now, we have one chart, which is the annual subsidized uh, fertilizer imports which I showed you in the homepage. This one, uh, as I said, just shows you uh, the percentage um, of, of, of imports that goes to subsidized uh, imports, uh, subsidized domestic plants, and we have the open products, and you can see the individual products um, highlighted uh, as a bar chart. So I have shown you very many charts. I'm sure we're all eager to understand where all these data sets are from. We have, as I said, at the bottom, you can see the sources for each of so the data sources for each of the charts. But more interestingly, you can go to our data sets page and you can have a look at uh, the source of each of our data sets. Um, and, and, and you can further look at um, the stakeholders involved, um, for example, FTWGs who helped validate the data that we currently have on the dashboard. And with that, um, I would encourage you to please put in your questions um, in the description box, um, in, in the chat box, and I'll hand it over back to our MC, Beverly. Awesome, thanks, you, thanks so much, Charlene, Grace, Nisha, that was really informative. I work on the program team, but I feel like I learn something every time I hear from my colleagues. Um, so if you are still here, congratulations, you did it. Um, maybe stretch a little. I know I certainly will. Um, I'm calling in from Washington and it is still dark. Um, so we're going to shift to the next portion of the workshop um, where we will, you'll get a chance to talk a little bit about some of the things that you've seen and think in practical terms um, how you can use this tool to drive your own decision making. But before we do that, we're going to do two quick polls. Um, so if those of you who had to listen to me ask about the version you are using over and over again, now is the time that you get to reap the benefits. Um, 
So what will happen is we'll ask a question. Uh, pop-up should show up on your screen. Um, if you don't get a pop-up, you may not be on the most recent version, but you can participate in the chat if you would like. So we'll ask a question in the pop-up. You can vote, um, and then we'll share the results. Um, so without further ado, why don't we launch the first poll question? Great, so the question is, in the next three months, how likely are you to use this dashboard on a scale of one to 10? So you should all see a pop-up on your screen and you can vote. One being the lowest, 10 being the highest, of course. Yes. No pressure, but you know. Great, sticking along. I'll give people another second or two in case they'd like to vote. Maybe do another stretch while I'm waiting for these very exciting results. All right, we're gonna close the poll in five seconds. Vote now or forever hold your peace. Excellent. So you should be able to see the results for those who voted in the poll, which is about 75% of the attendees. Perfect, so we have one other quick question for you. Um, the same thing will happen. Um, you should see, um, you'll see another pop-up with the new poll question. If you don't see the pop-up, you can also participate in the chat. Um, so why don't we launch, okay, the second poll's already been launched. So what area of the dashboard is most useful to you? I'll give folks a little bit of time to vote. It's cool, sorry, I'm watching on my screen because I get to see it update in real time. All right, we will give it another minute or two. Well, not a full minute, but another couple seconds. If you are dying to vote, please vote. Excellent. Great, you made it. That was the only pop quiz you were going to get in this session, so well done. Um, great, so we will move into a breakout um, discussion groups which should hopefully make it a little bit more dynamic so you can engage based on the things that you've heard. A couple of notes about the breakout rooms. Um, it's the same issue with the version you're using. Um, you'll get automatically moved into a smaller group um, where there will be a couple of prompt questions. We'll have members from the um, VIFA team to help moderate the discussion um, and we'll just walk through and think about ways in which you can use um, some of the information that the dashboard provides. Um, if you have any technical issues, our wonderful tech support for this call is Gerald. Um, we'll repost his uh, contact information again, but otherwise, without further ado, I will leave it so that you can move into your respective groups. Um, so Charlene, over to you, final remarks. Awesome. Before I do my final remarks, I just realized that I didn't show case um, how you can download the data. So I want to quickly show um, everyone, I think it's a question that came up a lot, that you can quickly download the data, um, any of the charts at the bot at the top of the chart, you can easily click on um, uh, the image uh, on the right top and you can download it as a PNG or SVG, or you can download it as an Excel or CSV where you can um, easily reuse it um, in your own analysis. So with that said, um, we have, come to the end. Um, I just wanted to thank each one of you uh, for taking the time uh, today just to participate in the in the launch. We've had we've, we've had like really good I, I don't know about you but my group we had really good um, engaging conversations. Um, ah, can you see me now? 
Perfect. I shall start again. So um, I just wanted to thank everyone um, for taking the time today to participate um, in the dashboard launch. We've had really engaging conversations and the team um, will share the, the minutes uh, of all that was discussed today. Uh, I would also like to thank all government, private sector and development stakeholders who have supported the co-design process, as I mentioned, um, that started in 2019. And a special thank you to the Ministry of Agriculture uh, in Kenya for the close partnership um, in ensuring the dashboard development was a success and the launch today uh, was also a success. Moving forward, we encourage you to use a dashboard in your work. I think all facilitators um, uh, advise you to do so. And in um, key de decision making within your organization. Um, the launch of the dashboard, we believe, is just the beginning of um, evidence-based decision making um, in the cattle fertilizer industry. Uh, in our group, we mentioned how um, it's a great start. Um, and there are, of course, different ways to improve it. But I think it's just a great start and, um, and then first steps uh, to using data in our organizations. Uh, we'll continue to engage all of you uh, to enhance the dashboard and to support the use um, of the dashboard. I'm available, of course, for any specific questions or comments you may have. And thank you all once again and have a great um, afternoon ahead. Awesome. Thank you all so very much. Um, so this concludes the formal portion of our program, but we've got a bonus because, you know, we just never stop giving fun things. Um, so if you have a couple of minutes left and you're curious, um, Catherine and Grace will give us a quick walkthrough of the COVID dashboard. So for those of you who are making decisions um, during these unusual times, um, we've got a great tool for you that can help match sort of key fertilizer indicators around um, COVID. So without further ado, if you have a couple of minutes, um, please do stay. If not, um, Asante Sana, have a wonderful day um, and hopefully we'll be able to interact with you again soon. Uh, Catherine, Grace, take it away. Okay, um, thank you, Beverly. So as Beverly mentioned, we'll just be taking you quickly through um, the kind dashboard that we have, we have created with Development Gateway. So, um, I hope you can all see my screen. And this dashboard was created, of course, in, re in response to uh, the COVID-19 situation we're having. And uh, the main reason for creation, creating the dashboard was to monitor the impact of COVID on, on the fertilizer market. So we started this initiative back in April uh, with uh, publications that were released in West Africa on a weekly basis and in, South, uh, and in East and Southern Africa on a bi-weekly basis. And uh, we'll talk about that then. And this is information that you can access from uh, the archive here. So if you click on the archive, you will have access to all the publications we did from April uh, to June, to the end of June. And so uh, having created this, uh, we had the key indicators that we were looking at, and this was assessing, of course, the impact of COVID. Uh, what health measures or economic measures were the government was, go was the government uh, institutionalizing in the countries uh, so as to so as to combat COVID, and then uh, here we had the most specific fertilizer sector indicators. So it's trying to understand what what's happening at the port level, what's happening with distribution through local transportation, what's happening at the borders to get product to the hinterland, and then also understanding what's happening at the agro dealer level in terms of accessibility to product availability and accessibility pricing information and then if there are any specific fertilizer sector responses by private sector public sector development agencies and then also a comment on stock availability so uh, creation of this dashboard uh, has initially been planned for a three month period so we have uh, have it in July as our first month that we publish, and then we have the most recent one in August where we went live yesterday. And so uh, just quickly going through it as um, we have uh, we have the assessment on the, sorry about that, we have the assessment on uh, 28 countries, uh, 17 in West Africa and 11 in Eastern Southern Africa. And uh, we have the indicators listed at the bottom, just, and if you hover over them, it gives you a comment on what's happening uh, through the different indicators. So if we were then to narrow in on what's happening in Kenya, you would simply click on the country and then you'd have the comments come uh, on the right side of the screen where you have an understanding of what's happening in the health measure sector, 
what's happening also in the economic measures. And the same information that's here can also be shown in the pop-up as you hover through the indicators and the different uh, plugging we have assigned in terms of whether uh, the impact of COVID has been strong, has been moderate, limited, and if uh, we don't have data, then uh, it would be grayed out. And so in, in, in creating this, um, it's with the notion that uh, we're just trying to track what are the media houses saying, what is government, what government memos are being issued, uh, what is private sector doing, and then just generally understanding, has there been a general impact or not? And what we've understood in East and South and Africa more specifically was uh, the, short, the long range season was already ongoing. And so there has been no significant impact at the importer or, or trading level. But then there was a slight impact in terms of distribution of product. And this was due to cessation of movement of product and, and, and issues on accessibility or op, op, operation, operations of agro uh, shops and then accessibility of the products. But as to whether it has had a significant impact, we have noted that it has been limited. And if we then uh, proceed to what happened in August, you would have the comments being updated on what's being done at an overall level in terms of where the country stands. If uh, any COVID measures put in place are uh, curtailing the economy in terms of growth. And then also, uh, of course, moving down to the more specific fertilizer sector uh, issues. So whether the port is operating uh, full, uh, full capacity or limited capacity, if there's uh, any limitations on movement of product, and then, um, and then also the other the sector responses. If, uh, if, for example, what Yara is doing in terms of availing product uh, to farmers um, to help them uh, in terms of understanding that there's no uh, money in the economy and so providing uh, free fertilizers, uh, this is something that we would capture and update. And so the main intention for this is for to have stakeholders who are interested in country-specific information as well as regional information. And they could and they could access this. Um, you could access this uh, for all uh, the 28 countries that we're looking at uh, in East, in West Africa and East and South Africa. So um, this is just an this is just a comment on who uh, is funding this program. So the Gates Foundation as well as the USAID are the main donors for this uh, short-term program, and then the developers, the Development Gateway, who are also the brains behind the dashboard. And then, of course, we have IFPC, uh, the AfricaFertilizer.org initiative within IFPC, AFOP, who are providing us with key agro dealer information as well as the pricing information in key markets, as well as Africom, who have also been running a price, uh, a COVID monitor uh, for the international market with some specific comments for some African markets. And then here's just a brief uh, comment on the methodology and how we are. Uh, first assigning flags or the codes and then where we're accessing the information from just to give uh, a feel for the how relevant or how credible the information is but this as I mentioned is a short-term program if we are to extend it we foresee us extending this just to the end of December because we with the hopes that COVID will not have a significant impact on the fertilizer sector uh, despite having an impact uh, from a health and economic uh, perspective. And with that, maybe Catherine, do you have additional comments? No, that's a perfect demo. Thanks, Grace. Yes. And so just one last comment is you can switch between English and French. And this was mainly to appeal to our or to cater for our West Africa audience, as well as a few East African uh, countries on, on having the information provided in language they can understand. And with that, uh, I would say thank you. And hand it over back to Beverly. Thanks so much, Grace. Yeah, thanks, Catherine. Um, sorry, was someone speaking who wants to jump in? No? Okay, with that said, I think we're great. So as mentioned in the chat, just a reminder that we will share the slides and a link to the dashboard um, via email. But again, thank you so much for your patience and your engagement. I'm looking forward to continuing the conversation. Um, have a lovely rest of your day.